to the first of three events dedicated to Ezaote, one of the world's leading producers of ultrasound diagnostic imaging systems, MRI devices and information technology for healthcare. Today, we are going to discuss the topic of research with some international clinical experts and prestigious guests from Ezaote and from the aerospace engineering world when research is aimed at improving diagnostic confidence, workflow and connectivity, innovation is expressed in its purest form. That's what you can achieve when research is focused on pushing the boundaries of technological potential and on exploding unknown horizons. That's what never stop seeing the unseen means for ESA Ote. According to the World Health Organization, the purpose of healthcare system is to protect the health of as many people as possible, to be able to meet expectations and ensure fair costs for diagnostics and treatments. The aim of this first event is to share with you as our other core beliefs, the vision of results as product of knowledge, research and a desire to constantly innovate. Ezaote is a multinational company with main headquarters in Genoa, Florence and Maastricht. It's present all over the world with different branches and commercial offices in almost 80 countries in all the world. And now it's time for the first guest of the event. We are going to talk about research and innovation with Mr. Franco Fontana, CEO of ESAOTE. Welcome, Mr. Fontana. It's really a pleasure to meet you. Hi, Jenna. Thank you. The same. Really and enjoyed. before I ask you some questions, I'd like to show you a video we recorded oh. a few days ago. So we asked some employees uh, to describe ESAOTE on their own words. Let's take a look. Amazing. Ezaote is an international but human-centered company. We really give value to the human relationship. Furthermore, it is a very stimulating and dynamic environment where to work, learn and grow. My company has made its purpose a trustful relationship with doctors, investing, researching and constantly improving the technology behind the images devices. A place in which uh, it is possible to see our contribution become part uh, of uh, products that have uh, a big uh, impact on the life quality of the people. The team works to create something and to go on in the future. A company that has a long tradition, a great tradition in innovation and research in the diagnostic field. Uh, the key driver of the company is the continuous investment in the research and development field. Think that up to 10% of sales revenues are invested in a research and development area and up to 20% of employees work in this field. It's like a family. And here you can always learn from your colleagues that are more expert than you, and you can always optimize your job. And to me, it's very important to work in such a good uh, environment. For me, it's like uh, David and Golia, that uh, because uh, we have to fight uh, in a world of giants, and uh, we have to put uh, innovation as a key factor of uh, of our strategy to, to win in this fight. And we do our best to fulfill the expectation of our customers. Mr. Fontana, I know this video is quite a surprise for you. What do you think about these comments? No, it is in fact, uh, I mean, it's really uh, always uh, nice and destructive uh, to hear how people in the company perceive the company itself. Uh, I think many of the words that they recall in the uh, words uh, comes from our core values, family, teamwork, uh, 
customer focus, results, commitment. That, that is really what we believe in. But I should say, I mean, the most is that people is the real asset of the company. Yeah, and as one of the employees said in the video, uh, Isarte allocates 10% of the revenue and 20% of its employees in research. It's just quite a lot, no? Actually, I mean, this ratio is even uh, going to be increased. Mm. Just to mention in 2021, we are going to invest 10% more than in 2020. Uh, the same we did the previous year. And the reason is very simple. I mean, uh, uh, we believe on uh, uh, innovation, which stay at the core of uh, our initiatives. Uh, and uh, we believe we have a clear vision of how to position the company in the market. In the video we've just seen, someone made an interesting analogy between the company and David and Goliath's battle, you know? <laughs> and what does it mean to you and to the Esauti's team to operate in such a competitive global market in which it's really important to invest uh, so a lot to be recognized as a leader? Uh, that's true. I mean, uh, our competitors are giant. Uh, we compete uh, with our best aptitudes, uh, which are uh, moving faster and push on innovation. Uh, that is uh, the real uh, strong point uh, that I think our company has. Uh, we leverage on this. As Aote today is uh, one of uh, the top uh, 10 players in the ultrasound markets, and we are gaining shares. So that means this approach works. And Mr. Fontana, we are now in a new era where time is more important than ever. So I would like to ask you, where do you see the company in five to 10 years from now? Uh, I think we are facing uh, uh, really uh, an exciting time because technology is evolving uh, very fast and maybe faster than ever. Uh, I think we have a clear plan, uh, solid and ambitious for the next five years. We would like to leverage on uh, our unique settings. This is uh, really where we recognize our strong uh, point uh, in our initiatives. In some words, uh, we would like to break complexity into simple concepts. Uh, that means uh, uh, software applications combining with artificial intelligence to make things easier, uh, but also miniaturizations. Uh, uh, in a words, making uh, uh, examination faster and better. And what does the concept of exploring the inside mean to you? I like this concept that was used for launching uh, uh, this uh, new product. Uh, that's uh, exploration, you know, recalls uh, the times in which uh, the unknown was uh, uh, pushing people to progress. There is much to do in the field that we are working on. Uh, we would like to facilitate uh, the transition uh, between uh, pure diagnosis to prognosis. This is where we see the most coming for the next year, supporting the health professionals and improving the quality of life. Thank you very much, Mr. Fontana, for joining us. It was really a pleasure. Thank you to you. It was really a pleasure to me also. Yeah, thank you. Exploring the inside means to go beyond to find the answers to the questions that science and mankind have been asking themselves for a very long time. On the structure of the human body, on the secrets it still holds, on the potential to extend life expectancy and on the possibility of providing the healthcare system with the tools to answer these questions more quickly.
Let's meet now Miss Florence Lab, customer marketing manager at Ezaote. Thank you. Miss Lab, welcome and thank you to be here. So please tell us something about you and what you do at Ezaote. Thank you, Gianna. I lead the customer marketing team and our main role is uh, to support our colleagues in the different countries by uh, developing uh, clinical materials and training that uh, they can give them to their customers. The other important part of our mission is um, also to centralize feedback from our customers in order to improve our products and to help in the development of uh, the new ones. Essentially, we work such as um, the antennae for product managers. Thank you. Live with us today, we have Mr. Guillaume Gauthier, product manager at Ezaote. Mr. Gauthier, welcome and thank you for being here. Yes, good evening, Jana. I'm really happy to be here with you today. Mr. Gauthier, what does it improving the performance of an ultrasound system mean? Improvement in performance on diagnostic capability is driven by innovation. And the Manabix 9X Ultra platform is providing multitasking operations to maximize efficiency in all working conditions. The intelligent architecture, together with active technology and smart processing, is reaching unprecedented performances, enhancing image quality for immediate diagnosis. And how important are usability and ergonomics in a diagnostic system today? Workflow is key in the clinical experience today. Less complexity means more efficiency and more patient throughput. Automation tools like eScan and eDoppler the exclusive intuitive finger touch image optimization easy mode and easy color together with the intelligent algorithms are elevating this experience. All these ergonomic improvements help the clinician to accelerate and reduce exact time, focusing more on patients and less on parameters. Uh, Gianna, I would also add that the usability needs to cover the advanced features like uh, shear wave or fusion. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Lab. And what about connectivity, especially in this period that forced everybody to be remotely connected? The streaming remote uh, real-time uh, um, ultrasound image visualization can be used uh, to review PC and tablet uh, remotely uh, ultrasound real-time. Yes, definitely it's true. Uh, today, all the clinical specialists, uh, thanks to these new tools uh, um, of Ezaote, are able uh, to um, support their customers with remote training. And uh, even doctors, uh, they can organize live demonstration for some colleagues uh, who are located anywhere in the world. It's really powerful. Yeah, it's really interesting. Thank you, Miss Lab. Mr. Gauthier, we've talked about how research and development enhance the user's experience and improve patient care. But with this technology, you wanted to make a step higher also in terms of customer care. Is it correct? Yes, Jenna. For Ezaote, customer focus has been always a key point uh, to address. And the, de the new dedicated Ezaote CRMD program that we are introducing has been created to, to have a full customer focus package. Thank you, Mr. Gauthier, for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Jana. It was a pleasure being with you tonight. But please, Miss Lab, stay with us. Something important is about to happen. Ezaote's relationship with the medical and scientific world allows us to transform what comes from these experience into knowledge and foundations for research, development, and product innovation. Successful products and solutions came from a detailed analysis and market feedback and the voice of the customers worldwide. The collaboration with experts and leaders of specific imaging sectors allowed to clearly identify the clinical needs and the rule of a company like Ezaote is to provide added value solutions to always improve patient care. We are now joined by Professor of Radiology, Dirk André Clevert, also the head of the Interdisciplinary Ultrasound Center at the University of Munich. Welcome, Professor Clevert. It's really a pleasure for me to be with you today. Hello, Jana. Hello, Florence. Hello, audience. It's a great pleasure to welcome you here. Professor Clevert, 
Why is an up-to-date ultrasound platform with a full range of the latest integrated technologies relevant in interventional radiology and in particular in your activity at Munich University? So, in my special position, most of the patients already had CT or MRI. And unfortunately, sometimes I find a diagnosis which we have to rule out what kind of pathology we handle in order to offer the best treatment for our patient. Therefore, we need the full options of uh, diagnosis from shear wave to contrast to fusion to make a plan to optimize the correct diagnosis and offer the best treatment for our patient. You collaborated with several companies like Ezaota during your professional career. What are the key factors for a successful collaboration? From my point of view <laughs> as a doctor, the key factor is, I told it, listen to the voice of the customer. Because you could offer the best system, if you don't listen to the voice of the customer, the customer will not accept it. I'm very glad that the engineer from Ezaota listened to us and we could have really the exchange of knowledge and finally we could offer our patient the best diagnosis and the best way for treatment of the patient. Thank you very much, Professor Clevert, for joining us. What was a pleasure. Bye. Miss Lab. Now we are going to talk about ultrasound technology in the field of skeletal muscle with a leading expert in this area, Professor of Radiology at University of Genoa, Carlo Martinoli. Professor Martinoli, welcome. We are really pleased to have you here. We have some questions for you. Could you explain why the importance of musculoskeletal ultrasound imaging is constantly increasing worldwide? So good evening, uh, everybody, and thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, that the performance of uh, uh, last generation devices have, has reached unsurpassed levels of spatial resolution and image quality. First of all, is that it is a clinical examination. Uh, I'm a musculoskeletal radiologist, but I visit the patient first, and then I hold the probe to confirm my diagnostic thinking. Since Isota has developed the first linear high-frequency probe, 80 MHz at the time, if I'm not wrong, and many others up to date, could you tell us how these technologies changed the clinical management of your patients? So, uh, everything uh, has uh, built up uh, and is now expanding exponentially using high frequencies. So on one side, um, there was the need to refresh and to learn anatomy, very in depth. You know, according to the details, these transducers are capable to provide. You no, know? then uh, uh, if a probe is now able to depict anatomical structures that are less than 0.1 millimeter in size, uh, we need to be able to check a pathological condition effect in these structures. Uh, and, and this requires skill, uh, knowledge. Uh, examination may become uh, uh, complex uh, in terms of uh, um, um, examiner skill. But even scanning bigger structure, high frequency bands and appropriate algorithm for denoising and contrast resolution have proved to be very effective in showing uh, subtle injuries and diagnosing new findings and architectural differences, even if minimal, never seen before. So with the uh, last generation transducer, uh, uh, we are able to uh, uh, really to see something that was impossible to depict uh, uh, in the past uh, with uh, ultrasound. Isaute has a center of excellence in Florence, where they design and produce many of their transducers. What is the value of an expert eye in the development of the fine-tuning of new models and technologies? I, I think it's critical. I think that uh, a continuing uh, interaction with the engineer, uh, with the engineers and the, the research and development team uh, uh, is important not just in the final phase of fine tuning, you know, or and uh, preset adjustment, but uh, uh, also when planning the project of a new transducer from the beginning and throughout the, the, the full process. I think that the relationship with the with experienced physician, with the dedicated sonologists, sonologists in the field. Uh, 
uh, of MSK may help engineers uh, to uh, and developers of transducers to make the product more centered to the needs and the expectations and finally more successful. I know that companies have stiff paths you know, when they develop a product, but the interaction with clinicians should be um, encouraged. This is very important and should become part of the process itself. Thank you very much, Professor Martinoli, for your time and for joining us. Thank you very much. Ms. Lab, these comments from Professor Martinoli underline the importance of continuing to develop new technology that can help us make more accurate diagnosis. What did Exalte recently do about this? Um, uh, firstly, Professor Martinoli is uh, completely right because our customers um, expect always the best for their patients. We are continuously pushed to design, to innovate, to improve our offer. Um, for example, in the past three years, we have launched uh, seven ultrasound systems from the portable to the premium card base and uh, we have integrated uh, also new probes um, such convex uh, linear or cardiac arrays we have uh, integrated artificial intelligence uh, into our software in different applications and uh, finally uh, customers are always uh, our prime motivation Thank you very much, Ms. Love, for your invaluable contribution. <laughs> Thank you. To conclude our journey, I'd like to introduce you now two unique guests. They belong to different generations, but they have a very special thing in common, the love for research and space explorations. On the 31st of July, 1992, flying on the shuttle Atlantis, one of our guests was the first Italian astronaut to spend eight days in space, completing 126 orbits around our planet. Whilst deploying the European retrievable carrier and the Italian tethered satellite, finally making Italian technology's name in space. Allow me to introduce Mr. Franco Malerba. Mr. Franco Malerba, welcome. Uh, thank you for your introduction. Yeah, it's an honor <laughs> to be here with you today. Too kind, too kind. As you know, you are not alone today. You are going to be joined by a woman who represents the new generations. We are going live to the Sicilian aerospace engineer, Miss Chiara Cocchiara. Forbes magazine recently named her one of the most remarkable leaders of the industry under 30, while the International Astronautical Federation chose her as one of its five winners of the Young Space Leaders Prize. Chiara's heart beats fast for space mission. She was the commander of the crew and engineer of an analog mission on Mars, focused on tactical and psychological exercises. Welcome, Ms. Cochiara. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Mr. Maleba, we are discussing today research. In the early 90s, Ezaote's ultrasound devices were used on the shuttle space voyages as part of cardiovascular examinations on the astronauts taking part in the mission. It was recently the 60th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's mission into space. Mr. Maleba, from tethered to perseverance to ingenuity's selfie on Mars, what's the next frontier of Space economy. Space, exploration, space economy. You. Well, uh, we have uh, an extraordinary future ahead of us. Uh, as you said, we have learned to live and work in space with the International Space Station. But now we are more uh, ambitious. We want to go back to the moon and stay on the moon. So, in fact, there is a program with the Americans, Artemis, to return to the moon. Uh, there is also uh, there are also programs to have another telescope after the Hubble telescope, which uh, gave us uh, the atlas of the universe. So after all, uh, exploration is always pushing a little further the ability of our instruments to understand the environment in which we work, in which we, we live and work, uh, and possibly uh, bring uh, benefits to mankind, if I may uh, uh, inherit the phrase from Neil Armstrong. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Ms. Kokiara, what do you think about it? I mean, how important is research to you? What can we expect from the aerospace engineering research in the future? 
whenever we talk about uh, uh, space research, we're actually talking about something that uh, goes beyond this field. Because nowadays uh, we see uh, the impact of a space application changing uh, new and uh, traditional industries. There is an impact in the food sector, culture, smart cities, energy infrastructure. Actually, there is a benefit that is brought from space. Indeed, we talk about space economy that by the OECD is defined as the way that we exploit space to bring a benefit to Earth. Mr. Malerba. You went from studying engineering to orbiting the planet 126 times before returning to Earth. That must have been a dream come true, isn't it? Well, um, actually, uh, I um, got involved in space a long time ago, in the very early days of the uh, human space flight in 1977. That was the first ESA, European Space Agency, selection. Uh, I was uh, good and lucky enough to uh, end up in the uh, finalists, but it took another 15 years before I got the flight ticket, which uh, after all sounds like like uh, uh, in order to be um, uh, to, to have the chance to fly, you also be very uh, stubborn and perseverant. Uh, but uh, today it's a bit easier. Uh, and by the way, there is now a, an open call by the European Space Agency for the fourth uh, selection of astronauts. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm sure not many will be selected. Very many will be the applicants. Uh, I think for all of them it will be an extraordinary experience, even going through the selection and then uh, get uh, in love with space. Yeah, thank you. Miss Cocchiara, do you think it will be possible to take a human crew to Mars? Let's not forget that Miss Cocchiara was the only European to take part in Utah Mars Society program run by NASA based on the search of life on the Red Planet. The question is uh, not uh, whether we will go or uh, when we will be able to go. Because uh, we already proved that uh, we are sending many robots uh, on uh, Mars, so definitely we are uh, writing the path to reach the red planet. But uh, there are many complications uh, at the moment uh, to bring a person uh, to, to Mars. Because uh, due to the movement uh, of the planets, then uh, there are uh, the so-called uh, launch windows that are uh, uh, particularly favorable to go to Mars. And uh, this happens around uh, every 27 months. Uh, so we need to wait for the perfect one, the correct one, in order to go. But then the other main problem nowadays is uh, linked to the fact that uh, to go to Mars uh, it would take a very long time, between uh, six to eight months. Now imagine to send a person to Mars. Apart from the waiting time, uh, space uh, is uh, a beautiful but dangerous environment for uh, men because uh, there are a lot of radiations and uh, to expose an astronaut for uh, such a long period of time this is really not uh, uh, ideal. So at the moment uh, uh, we are trying to understand how to improve technologies. Uh, we are talking about uh, nuclear propulsion systems. And uh, uh, like this, if we manage to reduce the time to go to Mars, then uh, definitely we are uh, increasing uh, our possibilities to go to the planet. Now, Elon Musk is uh, thinking uh, about uh, going to Mars on uh, 2024. So I believe and uh, I personally hope that uh, uh, this will uh, happen and that uh, I will uh, witness uh, very soon the next launch of uh, astronaut to Mars. And there are three pictures that one should uh, uh, take into consideration. Uh, it's the view of Earth from the International Space Station, a uh, beautiful planet Earth that we see, we recognize continents, we even recognize uh, perhaps uh, our town. Uh, then there is another picture, it's a picture from the Moon, a picture we, we, which we have from the moonwalkers of the Apollo program 
program. And the uh, Earth appears like a big moon mm -hmm. in the s black sky of, 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 the, of the moon. Eventually, there are also pictures taken from Mars of Earth. And you see two tiny dots, the Earth and the moon uh, around it. And they really look very far, uh, 60 minutes or so transit time for, 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 uh, for a signal. So this gives us the uh, measure of the challenge of uh, bringing human beings to Mars. Nevertheless, Mars is an extraordinary place where yeah. to learn about it's the origins of life. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult but fascinating at the same time, no? <laughs> I'd like to end this meeting by asking each of you to share a thought with the others. So I will start with you, Miss Kokiara. Uh, what would you like to say to Mr. Malerba? Well, uh, from me, it's uh, definitely a message of uh, thank you because uh, I believe that uh, every person needs to have uh, a mentor, a person to be inspired by that uh, push us with the uh, challenge ourselves and uh, get to, the, to reach our dreams. And uh, you have been this uh, for me, so um, I want to thank you personally and also from uh, all the other people that uh, you have inspired. Uh, thank you, Chiara. <laughs> uh, and I wish you to, uh, to succeed in your endeavors to keep up with your enthusiasm and love for, for science and space and maybe apply for the next selection at ESA. <laughs> and, uh, I wish definitely good luck. will. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, our guest, for joining us. Thank you, Miss Kokiara. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here with you today. And thank you, Mr. Malerba. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to promote science. <laughs> this is our ultimate goal. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much. We have seen how research exploring the inside is the only real way to provide suitable solutions to develop technology that will improve the human condition for doctors and patients. Thank you for being with us today. We look forward to seeing you again on May the 28th. And now, one word to define Esaute. Knowledge. Speed. Development. Innovation. The future. Team working. Patient care. Perseverance. Experience. Evolution. Cooperation. Dynamic. Unique. Passion. Improvement. Family. Research. 